Okay, progress. Okay, right. Um, I want to share my screen. Okay, share my screen. Uh, share with screen. Let's share this screen. Okay. All right. Can anybody? Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I just did a short um, uh, presentation just to explain the background be behind uh, open source ecology or or OSC as we call it. And um, uh, well, Curtis is familiar with it as we met at, in Missouri during the Summer X uh, 2021. Anyway, so OSC is basically um, an organization, open source ecology that was founded by Marcin Jakubowski around 2003. So it's been going on for quite some time. And uh, he came up with this vision to, to create the GVCS, which is the Global Village Construction Set. So it's actually a set of 50 machines, which he reckons are needed to start a civilization. Um, right, and I, I think the, the underlying thing about these uh, machines, open source machines is that they are open source which means that they're not proprietary. So the designs of the machines are open for anybody to download. And if you can, build them yourself. And um, on the screen, I have the two sources. So this is the Open Source Ecology website, opensourceecology.org. And then there's the wiki. The wiki is actually where you'll find most of the uh, information, all the designs, all the um oh, oops sorry let me go back uh how do i go back uh, i think all right okay um so uh, the open source ecology wiki so which is wiki.opensourceecology.org um is where you'll find the actual all the designs and all the information. There's just a heck of a lot of information about um, uh, open source ecology on there and all the things that they're involved in, all, all the machines that have been, um, that are being developed. All right. Okay, so uh, this I'll, is, yes. I'd like to add something about the wiki. Yes. The wiki is also where, uh, as we progress, and we take on a, a task that's also where you record uh, uh, what we produce or whatever hmm. in, the, in the wiki from notes to what we're doing. Uh, am I right, Ken? Yes, that's correct. Actually, um, the fact that these machines are all open source, the designs are all free for anybody to download and use in any way that they wish. What what is actually requested um, when you do that is to actually feed back into, um, into the development of these machines. For instance, if you downloaded the, uh, the plans to make the, um, the CV press and you made your own version of the CV press and you actually improved on the design that you found, you are uh, actually I'm on the call. You are actually asked to feed Excuse back. Yes, all right. You are actually asked to feed back into um, the wiki to help develop the, you know, the whole um, GVCS. So it's actually a way of um, the premise behind open source is that the machines are developed by a global network of people. So the idea is that if we have contributions from all over the globe to improve the designs, then it'll develop faster than uh, and be a better product than um, proprietary machines. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. Later, I'll show you. I'll show you one of my uh, my my log book. Um, so you can. We actually keep a. You can keep a log on the wiki uh, of what you're actually doing and we're involved in. Right. Uh, Ken, yes. for the uh, as we start this uh, uh, OSC Botswana, yes, are we going to be keeping a log of the different things that we use to even bring 
OFC Botswana into existence? Yes. Um, yeah, the idea is to try and be as open as possible so that people can actually replicate what we're doing, you know, and have an okay. easier time um, of actually uh, maybe opening their own OSC chapter wherever they are. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so even the plans, the 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 business plan that I've written is mm -hmm. is on the wiki. It's also on the wiki as well. Okay. All right. Um, so the GVCS, the Global Construction Set, is a, is a modular uh, DIY low-cost uh, set of blueprints that enables fabrication of the 50 dif different industrial machines that it takes to build a small, sustainable civilization with all the modern comforts. So as I said, this is, these, are, these blueprints are freely available, and this is the direct opposite of proprietary um, uh, designs. And uh, so in the next slide, these are, th this is actually the list of the 50 different machines and the state of completion. So at the moment, only the uh, 3D printer, the micro house, the CB press and the power cube and uh, are at 100% completion. Uh, but this is actually 28, uh, from 2018. Uh, let me, who have we got? Somebody else wanting to join. Uh, so this is uh, this is from 2018. So the tractor, the micro tractor, is actually complete. I would say that's at 100 yeah. percent now. Um, the micro house uh, for us, the micro house is, or at least for me, the micro house is not of much interest because it's of stick frame uh, construction which uh, in Africa, I think stick frame is not, not the way to go because of termites. We have termites. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so CVs uh, are, the, are for me the better bet. All right. But as you can see from the list, I mean, it's a pretty long list of uh, things. And um, I think one of the things that I was impressed with when I got to um, Missouri, OAC Missouri, was was the was the setup there. I mean, it, it was nice to see that it was all there, but also what was disappointing was the state of uh, development. I I would have liked to have seen much more done, or um, you know, much much further development. But I think that's a problem with. Um, getting people to participate when they're actually working jobs and they, you know, it's difficult to get time off. Right, um, right, but at the moment, so what we're looking at now is um, the 3D printer, the CB press, the power cube and the tractor. These are products which are ready, which are already ready. So Marchin has actually sold 3D printers, he sold the CB press and you need a power cube to actually operate the CB press. So power cube is, is done and the tractor. Um, and the idea is every time there's a build of these machines, it should feed back into the original design to develop it or to improve it. Right, okay. So I have a note here, micro, uh, micro house is stick frame construction, not suited for warm climate because of uh, termites. Right, so the, um, the OEC vision, <clears throat> uh, the OEC vision is to create a world of collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of, of abundance. So this is, I actually lifted this from the OEC vision, OEC Missouri, but what does it mean? For me, it means uh, free and open information used to create products that have a meaningful up impact on African lives and not dependent on global supply chains. We, we have all we need in Africa from the soil beneath our feet. A world of abundance, enough for everyone, not a world of haves and have nots, or a world of artificial uh, scarcity. Right. Uh, if there are any questions as I go along, um, please stop me and ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only uh, like in reference to uh, the this uh, resources available. Yes. Um, 
and the induction oven to make the steel because almost everything that we're making is made with the steel. Depending uh, on the steel, yes. Yeah. There's, I imagine, uh, and I'm not sure that Botswana has uh, iron ore. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, no, iron ore we have. We have iron ore. There's just, there's a new um, mine that just opened up and has actually supplied its first shipment to China uh, last, I think it was last October. Okay. Um, but yeah, there is I know, there is I know, I just discovered it's only, it's about, a, the mine is about 100 miles away from my proposed uh, OAC Mansa DD or OAC Botswana site. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, so uh, OAC Mansa DD, the area that I'm thinking about is an area called Mansa DD where there's a land of about 128 hectares land available. It's, it consists of uh, eight plots of uh, 16 hectares each, which belong to members of my family. So I still have to negotiate with them <laughs> about this uh, land, but it's, it's actually not being used. So it's, uh, it's a terrible waste and it's a great opportunity uh, to use this land um, because it's like the location of the land is about um, in the middle of Botswana. Most of the population of Botswana is, is situated on the eastern side of the country and about halfway down between north and south is a place called Palape where the land is and this is also the location of the Botswana International University of Science and Technology. Uh, located there as well, uh, okay. which um, uh, you did, uh, Curtis, you did some research about uh, working, what is it? Um, uh, they have a, a workshop there, a metal workshop. Yeah. yeah. I was actually trying to get into the site, but I couldn't, uh, it was ha working very, very slow. And I yeah, it, yeah. It, it's difficult to get in it. It takes a it takes a good while to get in it and then uh it seems like it shuts down at night time yeah yeah we probably yeah. uh <laughs> gotta have somebody to go visit them uh but you say you're getting ready to go yes to, yeah to, i to think by the end of, yeah by the end of this month i'll be going back to botswana uh, to take up a job unfortunately <laughs> but uh uh, need, needs must uh, have to be able to feed the family. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, I mean, once I'm there, I'll be able to get in touch with them. And uh, I don't know. And also, I want to try and start um, sourcing funding from CEDA, which is our Citizen Entrepreneurship Development Agency. Uh, so they have okay. development, they have uh, loans, um, to, to start enterprises. And then the other thing that um, Derek brought up was uh, a public benefit corporation uh, registered to be registered in the USA to primarily to source funding uh, to, or, or rather fundraising in the US. But I, I think um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. I think Derek will take the lead on that. Okay, because I, I don't know what that is. I never I never heard of it. I imagine it's something like a like a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. But, I, uh, yeah, I think Derek knows more about it because I've never heard of it either. <laughs> right. Anyway, so my plan was um, to register a nonprofit uh, educational institution in Botswana. Uh, I think this is following in from. Uh, Curtis's advice um, in terms of uh, being a nonprofit, uh, in terms of sourcing funding, and and the profit for profit business will come later, once we are up and running. And then uh, the idea is to build a micro factory uh, to fabricate machines, which will provide bootstrapping finance uh, for to be able to launch uh, other businesses from that. And then also, uh, because it's an educational institution, we need classrooms, we need dormitories, 
And this will primarily be an off-grid uh, facility. Okay, that's the plan. Okay. Uh, and then these the steps to apply to creating OSB um, OSEB Mansa DV, uh, just calling it that. Um, uh, basically outlined in the OSC campus business plan, which I've shared with uh, you guys and also on uh, WhatsApp and Telegram and on my log, wiki log. And I, I think the first thing we need to establish there is water supply. There's no water there. There's a, it's basically just bush. There's nothing there. There's, um, uh, it's, we, yeah. You have, you have to have a well then. Real. Yes, yes, very true. Yes, true. Yeah. Most of our water does come from underground. We do. Yeah, it's quite common to get water from underground and uh, establish a power supply and then to build the foundation, uh, to build the workshop foundation and the structure and the roofing. Uh, the roof um, planning will be um, a PV roof. PV, it, it'll be a roof made out of PV panels. You know uh, what Martian called the roofless roof, PV roofless roof, right? So the roof itself will be the PV panels. And then to develop the infrastructure for student accommodation, classroom, uh, kitchen and dining uh, facilities as well, right? Before we can actually bring any uh, students on, on site. All right. Uh uh, I was looking at um, uh, Vincenzo's uh, wiki. Yes. yes. And uh, the um, the well driller that uh, is used to, to drill the wells, there's a possibility. I've seen it on some tractors, and I know they have some like that here, where they the, the well driller is. Uh, uh, made onto the uh, back of the tractor or attachment yeah. that you put on there, yeah. but and, and the, the the well driller is one of the uh, one of the tools that uh, yeah. that that is in there. But I don't know if it's designed. But we might ask uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Vincenzo about uh, designing the three D you know, the the free CAD portion of of it. Uh, and then let the, I imagine we're going to get some help from some of the students at that uh, technical university there. Yes, yes, that's the idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, to try and forge some close collaboration links with the university there as well. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, when you say Vincenzo's um, wiki, did, did he have a design for the for the well driller already? Or uh, what what he have on his wiki is uh, his uh, uh, progress through three through uh, free CAD and and a uh, uh, CAD drawing. So I'm um, uh, like I think he went to school for CAD and then so uh, he applied to. Uh, Adapted it to, to free CAD, but he, he did show that uh, some of the things that he had created using uh, free free CAD. Free CAD. And I was just, you know, going kind of on to bring that to him uh, about designing it. Now, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, in this tractor, uh, um, he didn't what what. What Marcin didn't do is put a three D uh, a three point hitch on the okay. back of the tractor, and yeah. that was one of the things that we were supposed to uh, uh, come up with with ourselves. So I, I did look at some of them. And didn't didn't appear to be really difficult, and but but I don't know free CAD. I I I I've been using it somewhat, but I'm not I'm not nowhere near a, a expert or anything like that. So mm -hmm. that portion, I would, I would almost ask somebody to know to uh, for the tractor, even that uh, Life Track Six or the or the twenty Life Track Twenty version, mm -hmm. uh, twenty twenty version, uh, to to put a a three D hitch because for for uh, plowing, uh, mm -hmm. cultivating anything you need, anything like that, you're gonna need that three that three point hitch. 
Yes, yes, that's true. Right? It would be useless without something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just looking again at this, uh, the state of completion and uh, the well drilling rig is quite low down, about halfway down, <laughs> less than 25%. Yeah, part because mo, mo, there's not a whole lot of people that's participating in uh, in, in uh, OSE that yeah. needs the well drilling. Uh, uh, like like you say, uh, the country of Botswana was was uh, landlocked and, and you know don't have a water source like like in other yeah. places. Yeah. But being that now we at we at that point, I think that's one of the things that we want to do. Okay. All right. Yes. True. Uh, right. Do you know what the water table is in in Botswana in that area where Mansa um, Mansa. Um. Actually, my uncle, um, my uncle Trevor is. Uh, I don't know. I think he's doing some farming in that area. So he was saying that um, to drill, you need to be able to. You need to drill about two hundred meters. He was saying. Okay. 200 uh, meters is uh, how many feet? Uh, I have no idea. It's about, it's about 600 feet. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. 600 feet. Um, I don't know if that's, that sounds like a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is compared to where the one that we did in, my father, I was raised on the farm. We drilled the wells ourselves, yeah. and they, but they wasn't, they wasn't, but like twenty feet. The water table was like twenty, twenty-five feet. Okay, yeah, I'm sure you said you said two hundred. So let, let me just check that. Uh, let me just uh, try that. Try that. Uh, Yeah, he said safe depth is about 200 meters. Okay. Yeah, all right, that's a lot, yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, moving on. Um, so the long-term plan is to be able to create a platform out of the um, OSC, out of the educational facility from which other business enterprises can spring from. So we're talking about things like, um, you know, so with the, if we start with the educational facility, teaching people how, teaching young people, oh, we're running out of, oh, we've only got 10 minutes left. Wow. Uh, and I can't upgrade. Um, uh, I should, um, okay, maybe we, we can start another meeting immediately after. Would that, would that be all right? Actually, it's my, all right for me. Sorry, it's all right for me. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, right. I'm good with it. All right. Okay. Great. Um, I, actually, I'm, I, I spent a long time talking. Um, it was, this was supposed to be like a ten-minute short introduction, but anyway, uh, let me just uh, finish off. Um, so the idea was to create a platform from which other businesses, business enterprises can spring from. And for, for instance, if we build the, um, the CB price, so that creates a whole stream where you can a stream business, where you can do CB housing con uh, construction business, solving uh, affordable housing. Um, then there's agricultural businesses, which also spring from all the tooling that we can make, you know, the tractor and whatever implements that can be made from. It. So there's a, there's a whole list of businesses or the idea, that's the idea that I would, I would like to see that from this, we can, um, uh, what is it, explode into all sorts of other businesses to be able to, to, to farm to be able to build houses, to, you know, a complete ecosystem, right. And this was just um, an idea that I had. This is from the business plan where you have the micro factory at the center and then the campus and then, and all the other businesses that spring from that. 
Right. Okay, so that was my uh, short, long presentation. So if there are any other questions, any questions? Uh, um, one, I definitely want to know about that public, uh, that, that or source that Derek was supposed to talk, talk about, to give us info on how that public uh, uh, mm -hmm. fundraising. Okay. Yeah, um, what is it? The the public benefit, public benefit uh, corporation, public benefit corporation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe back yet. Yeah. Okay. Let me stop sharing my screen. Right. Galaxy. Hello, Galaxy A three core. Oh, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Can you hear me, Jack? Yeah, I can. Hi, how are you, Jack? No, I'm fine. All right. Uh, let me introduce you to the other people. So um, we have uh, Curtis, who's in the US, but he's done a lot of philanthropic work. In, um, in Ghana, and then we also have Derek Chapman, also in the U.S. in California, and we have my sister as well. So Jack is um, is actually an instructor at one of the, um, the technical what do you call it, technical institutions in Botswana. Yeah. Okay, Jack, can you mute your can you mute your your mic? Um, yeah, I can. Okay. Is my mic on? Oh, okay. No, that's fine. No? Right. No, it just off. Okay. So, uh, so I'm hoping that Jack will be one of our instructors since he's um, our instructors are master, master fabricators. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll right. All right. Um, okay. So uh, I think, um, can I ask Derek to just to talk a little bit about the um, Public Benefit Corporation? Sir Jas? Sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. I'll try to talk over the, uh, the background there. If you guys oh, can hear me, sure. um, I'll just proceed and if you can I'll just repeat if uh, necessary. Um, I, um, I wanted to speak to you guys a little bit about a um, corporate structure that uh, may fit for what um, Ken you're you know, trying to develop uh, in Botswana. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of stems from um, you know my um, kind of moral company and the things that kind of drive me uh, from a, uh, a business standpoint and a social responsibility standpoint. And I discovered, um, you know, this corporate structure after um, doing some research about how, you know, I could be most effective in uh, my mission of, you know, not only, um, you know, helping, um, you know, our general mankind, but also, um, you know, the planet and also, uh, make it, you know, profitable for, you know, my shareholders and, you know, for myself. So um, I did a little research on uh, this corporate structure that is uh, allowed in most of the states here in the United States, and it's called a uh, public benefit corporation. And it's very similar to a nonprofit, but there are some differences that um, need to be considered uh, before, um, you know, uh, deciding if this is the right, you know, structure. Um, now, most people know what a nonprofit is and, you know, uh, they're familiar with some of the advantages of it. Um, one being a 501c3 uh, classification of status. And the 501c3 
uh, is a tax designation that allows for nonprofits to be taxed, you know, um, you know, as a nonprofit versus as a for-profit business. So when it comes to uh, work uh, like, you know, uh, OSD and what we're trying to accomplish here, you know, those type of uh, structures are, are common. However, a lot of people don't uh, know about a public benefit corporation, which is very similar, like I said, to the nonprofit, but I don't believe, and um, you know, I've done some studies in some states that allow it to be kind of classified as a public benefit nonprofit, and there might be some 501c3 status that could be attached to that. Uh, however, most people who choose the public benefit uh, corporation choose it because you have the option of actually being a for-profit, but still have those same uh, goals and missions that are back basically uh, focused on planet, people, and profit without actually having to be designated as a nonprofit. You could take profits, you could you know, kind of function as a regular C corporation. And the only thing that you would have to do when you file for your articles of incorporation is put a designation in there that you're a public benefit corporation. And that basically gives you uh, kind of like the, uh, the authority within the organization as board of directors or directors to um, stay focused on uh, mission critical things like the planet and the people over shareholders profits. So those are some of the things that uh, differentiate that because most of the time in corporations, you're uh, pigeonholed to the shareholders in their direction. Uh, versus like the direction of the, you know, the overall organization and their mission. So um, you're, you're not solely focused on profits, but you're focused on uh, the things that, you know, really make up uh, the organization's foundation. So I like it for all of those reasons. And it may be something that may be suitable for this um, organization going forward. Um, I think there's a way to um, utilize this uh, in a way where it could be like a uh, a, a organization that could uh, facilitate some of the fundraising here in the U United States uh, for projects in Africa. Um, and I think this is a good vehicle because um, a lot of people, um, they wanna do things, but a lot of times, you know, they're looking for profit and this is a way to kind of do uh, you know, those type of impactful things uh, in Africa and still uh, profit in a way. So uh, what I was suggesting was maybe we could look at this as a... Uh... Oh, okay. So this just entered here. So this is here. That's better. Hi, Judith, can you hear us? Hello, Curtis? Yeah. Oh, great, okay. Uh, Derek, over to you. Yes, okay. Sorry about the interruption there. Um, so I was speaking about uh, the difference between a public benefit corporation and just your regular nonprofit or regular C corporation. And the uh, difference, I believe, when I was, um, you know, I left the call, uh, we were talking about um, the shareholders um, being the, the most important uh, aspect of uh, any for profit business. So uh, they're mission is to create profits for their shareholders. And unlike a public benefit corporation, uh, their uh, mission um, is kind of in line with their profits. And um, one of the other key components is, you know, it's all about, um, you know, the environment or the planet. Um, so uh, you're able to kind of hold all the things that is true about a nonprofit, but you're able to, um, be designated as a for-profit business. And the only thing that's required is that you have to um, you know, designate that in your articles of organization uh, uh, or incorporation, I should say, uh, when we're talking uh, corporations. Um, so um, Delaware, um, you know, Nevada and Wyoming are states that people typically 
um, you know, set up uh, corporations in the United States. And I was talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages of that. Um, and that, you know, uh, is typically uh, surrounding, uh, you know, tax, uh, taxation, and then also privacy issues. Um, so um, I, I spoke about putting together the proper paperwork to file it if this is the direction uh, the group would like to go in. And, um, you know, the idea is to utilize um, this organization to uh, garner attention of investors and, uh, you know, policymakers uh, here in the United States that have an interest in uh, developing uh, programs and, uh, uh, you know, uh, organizations in, in the Africa region. So um, those are, you know, some things that uh, I wanted to share with the group because, uh, like I said, you know, you're able to um, have some benefits of like a nonprofit, but uh, be a for-profit business. And in the case of the United States, you know, that's, you know, being a capitalist, you know, uh, country, you know, that's kind of what drives people uh, in investing. So um, something to consider, um, you know, I, um, I looked at this uh, for um, my own, um, you know, platform here in California that I'm trying to, to develop. And uh, it allows for you to, you know, participate on, you know, grants, you know, and some other things that uh, is not available to an individual or certain organizations. So um, something to consider. And um, like I said, I shared some links and some information and definitions of what a public benefit organization is. And I'll be happy to put more uh, on a WikiLeak or something like that for people who want to uh, research it. Uh I got a question. Uh, well, what's the duration of the time that from the time we get started to the time you can start raising funds to send to send to the project and about the Botswana project? You're asking for a timeline or how long it'll take to set up a, a corporation to be able to um, provide funding for um, projects in Africa? Yeah. Um, well, uh, um, typically, you know, um, the process of setting up a corporation is all based on the person who's following. So it's just an online document that could be filled out, you know, in an hour or less. And uh, once you, you know, you know, send it in, it takes typically about in California, it takes about four to five days um, and they'll send you uh, a certified copy that it's been filed with the state. And then from there, um, you will file for a, uh, a EIN number with the, uh, you know, the IRS. And then that'll allow for you to open up a bank account and with the papers of your articles and your, uh, your EIN number, um, the person who is, you know, on the, you know, the documents as a director or officer has the ability to open up a, a bank account here domestically. Uh, and then at that point, um, you know, you want to make sure you have your articles, um, you know, uh, kind of in place with uh, your bylaws and uh, whatever else, shareholder certificates and things that need to be issued. You know, all of that could be done within, you know, to answer your question, maybe uh, a week or two. And then from there, um, you know, there's no like special tax filing like you would do with a 501c3 where you have to, you know, wait for them to, you know, on the federal level to send you all the document back and that could take months to years. Um, but this is just literally just filing, um, you know, as a corporation and designating yourself as a public benefit corporation. And, and your tax filings are similar to a C corporation. Um, so that's at the end of the year. And, you know, um, you have a fiscal year. Your fiscal year is, you know, from the, the time you say that the organization started to do the, you know, the following year on that date. Ken, Ken, you still with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. It's kind of hard to hear you, Ken. My job to turn your mic up a little bit. Okay. Can you can you hear me now? 
That's better. Can you go a little bit, just a little bit more? Actually, my volume is uh, on 100%, and that's as high as it goes. I'll try and speak louder, if that helps. Right. Uh, so are there, are there any questions on that, or? Uh, um, basically, that, that was um, as far as getting this uh, started. Uh, where where uh, Derek is saying the weekend, does that fit for you? Sorry, could you say it again, please? There we're saying it takes about a week to set up this uh this non this public corporation. Is that what you what you wanted? Because like uh I'm not sure exactly how the people like like in other words, it sounds like it's a quasi uh share shareholding corporation. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Derek dropped off again, I think. Oh, no, no, I'm uh, still here. Yeah, it's it's a shareholder led organization with a mission. So, you know, typically people who invest in it are, you know, mission driven. Do you do you know uh any any uh, philanthropists or that would uh potentially join the group once we got it set up? Or uh, cuz I I'm, I'm not really understanding how the funds is generated that goes to the norm to the for instance uh for for the OSC Botswana does that have to be a nonprofit to get funds from uh the group that you're talking about Derek not necessarily however I believe that's what Ken was saying was that um he was set up a nonprofit in Botswana and then uh -huh there will be a for-profit arm here in the United States that will collaborate and partner with uh, the organization in Botswana. So there'll be two separate organizations. Okay. One for-profit and one for nonprofit, and one will be domestic and one will be local. I mean, it will be international. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm speaking more so the, the cash flow from uh, say the group that you set up in the United States, the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the fund that, that uh, is used for that uh, one is the fund uh, is investor funds. Am I right? Yes. So, and it, uh, and it could be grant funding. It could be grant funding. It could be all sorts of funding. It could be loans. It could be all types of things. Okay. So so um, the funds then they, they, they first put it into that uh, organization you got, and then that organization. Uh, funnels to the nonprofit in Botswana. Correct. Okay. I guess the only thing after that is, do we have any potential? Do, uh, do you do you have any potential investors, uh, Derek? That that uh, you know, in other words, there's a goal that we're trying to reach, right, Ken? There's a goal, uh, a startup goal uh, amount that you're trying to reach. Am I right, Ken? Um, yes, yes. And uh, the thing is, the, the way that I wrote the business plan, it was based on a, um, a, 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 it was based on a startup in Botswana looking at the, the local local uh, looking at the local <laughs> looking at the local scene in Botswana where you have like uh, funding agencies like SIDA and who have a ceiling a ceiling funding um, you know like four million pula uh, so yeah, I was actually targeting that um, that is not to say that I mean the four million pula is is it's a bit it, 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 it is it, it's not it's not really enough it's not really enough for the machines that we need to get to be able to start the um, the 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 whole what is it the whole um, enterprise we need uh -huh. from the beginning. Well, do you have an amount that you would need to start uh, to get to the Stage, what you're talking about, Ken? The startup right. stage completed. 
or uh, I need to go back and look at the figures because what I was doing was I was shaving off I was shaving off um, amounts to, to to try and get it to all fit in within the four million pula. So if I if if I was actually to look at it realistically and say, okay, this is how much we need for the equipment, this is how much we need for the workshop, this is how much we need for the buildings, the you know the the dormitories and the classrooms, um, then I would probably come to the figure that's more than four million pula. And four million pula. Uh, hi, hi, sorry, Ken. Can I chip in there? Yes. Yes, uh, I believe CEDA has increased their limit to 40 million. Well, 40 million, okay. Yeah. So, all right, okay. No, I was looking at the CEDA site and I was initially looking at the, um, what do they call it, the manufacturing uh, loan. And yes. it says it's, 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 a limit, it's limited to 4 million pula. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I don't know. Um, maybe I'll need to get in touch with them to ask them what the limit is. But anyway, uh, but um, from what Curtis is saying, um, what I would like to do then is to go back to the um, to the plan and to look at all the the figures um, because I have quotations for I have quotations for um, uh, what do you call it the uh, uh, the CNC torch torch table. I have quotations for the uh, iron worker and all those uh, different pieces of equipment, and it just it doesn't fit into four million. Four million pula is really is not enough. Okay, yeah. uh, but um, like for the building uh, itself, yeah, uh, you need the brick maker that compress or uh, or, or maybe even a couple of them. I don't. I'm not sure, mm. but uh, you 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 definitely need the brick maker, and you need the steel, the rebar that yes. goes into the uh, the foundation. Yes, absolutely. and possibly the steel to make to make the uh, the, the, the the brick machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless unless you were just gonna try to buy buy the brick machine from Martin and have it shipped, or you know, to um, to, get, to get started. Just, just to start, just to get started in the startup project, uh, I'm saying you, you need rebar, yeah, and you need uh, you need the money for concrete and yeah, uh, for yeah, the yeah. for the floor and stuff like that. Yes, yes and yes. and and now I, I was looking for a, a figure there, a dollar figure. What what you could say, okay, uh, and then we look for is Cedar going to do that, or should we look to uh, the, the the group that Derek is talking about? Hmm. Okay. Um, right. Uh, I, I, I like I said, I was trying to fit everything in within the CEDA budget. But um, if what uh, Laranjo is saying, there's a there's increased amount. Uh, how to divide it? Uh, I, I I'll need to go back and see what I can. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. Uh, maybe maybe we could have maybe schedule another meeting, and then at that other meeting, then we can also come up with. Um, I think what Derek also mentioned was that in order to set up this uh, for public benefit corporation, he he would need names. He would need the name of the corporation. He would need the officers' names. And he would need to know how many shares to be issued, and uh, corporation address. Uh, I I don't know. I think since this is going to be in America, uh, I don't know. Um, Derek, would you be able to take care of all of that? Um, how many names would you need from us? Sure. Um, typically, you need a president, a treasurer, and a secretary. So three. However. Um, in some cases, um, one person could serve in all of those roles or maybe more than one, depending mm -hmm. on the state. So you can act as the president and the treasurer or the president and the secretary. Mm 
So depending on the state that we choose to uh, register with, then I could get the information and determine which uh, officers are needed. Uh, uh, Derek, uh, you you believe this will work for what we're trying to do? I think it's another vehicle. Um, I'm not absolutely certain that it'll work, um, but I think if it's a, a, a way to uh, further uh, development in, in Africa, I think um, this is uh, one way that uh, it could be done. Uh, that I'm familiar with. Um, and it's all going to come down to projects, you know, that are viable and practical and uh, have the, you know, the right people to manage it uh, for people to want to, uh, to back it or finance it. So um, it's all about the story, you know, how compelling it is and if it, you know, makes sense uh, for the investor. So okay, uh, do, very. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Is it, do you have any potential investors that you could even talk to them about what we're trying to do to get an idea on what they would fund? I don't have like any, the project. I don't have any people um, lined up. However, I do have a network of people who may be interested. Well, that that might that might help. Uh, we kind of have to. What do you need to get to get started? If you say, okay, we got a week, so it, so it takes about a week. If you say, okay, in a week we'll be, we we could be at this stage if we do A, B, and C. What right. what is it that you need us to do? Well, what we have to do is determine the name. We will have to identify the officers. We will have to uh, fill out the 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 application, and then file it, and then determine which, uh, before that, determine which state you want to do it in. Uh, and then determine if uh, we want to do it kind of alone or with uh, legal uh, assistance. They have uh, organizations and companies that will basically do all of it for us for a fee. Um, or we could do it ourselves and save the, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the filing fees that these organizations collect for doing it for us. So um, I sent some numbers to Ken. Uh, one state, you know, it's all different based on the state, but one state it was like 150 to 200 dollars. Another state it's about 200 to 300 dollars to get it done. And so that will be the cost. You know, I don't know if there's funding, you know, to pay for it or if you know we all need to pitch in or you know come up with a way to get that done. But it'll cost probably about 300 bucks to get it off the ground, and then I could do um you know uh, you know the articles uh, probably myself and then you know kind of share it with the group and then we could give input on what we want in them and then come up with the shareholders and, um you know um, value and then uh distribute stock certificates along with that and then um I think that's about it for now. And then what goes on from there is like you have to, you know, do all the, you know, the, the things that's required to have a company. So if you're talking about a local um, local presence, then there's probably, uh, you know, local business licenses that would have to be secured. Um, there's, uh, you know, probably some insurance that needs to be in place, uh, you know, a website so we can have some kind of presence. So there's some monies that need to go beyond just setting up the company. So all of that probably needs to be discussed before we decide that we want to go even set it up. Uh, this is this where I think uh, having having some investors already interested by like for instance, if you come up with the idea, the name or whatever. If I was going to go to investors. I would I would get a I would have a, a a project that I could explain to them what we're doing even if I didn't have a name for it I would definitely have the the the, the, the uh, concept where I could explain it to them because depending on what what you're trying to do probably going to determine who would invest you see so so uh, for instance if it was a if it was a church you was building a church you could probably use go to the churches 
uh, and, and solicit, uh, you know, uh, uh, donations or something like that. But but so I don't know. I don't know what field of people we would be uh, soliciting uh, uh, investors or trying to get investors involved. From what from I, oh, don't you think that would make a difference? Uh, uh, who we acting to be investors? There. Um, what would make a difference? I'm not kind of clear on what you're contrasting. For instance, uh, if we 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 try to do a project where we we'll, we building uh, uh, a facility that will eventually uh, produce machines. Okay, now what what group of investors? I don't know how investors work. Okay, on 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 on, you know, for prop for, for profit investors because because. Uh, uh, for-profit investors is different from uh, the people that I had dealt with in the past where they were sort of philanthropists and they just, they donated money to the different uh, projects that was sort of like within their uh, uh, understanding, they, they would make, they make uh, uh, donations. But that's different from investors that's in, in for-profit, I, I believe that's different. Am I right? Right, so so I I, I think I, I I have a grasp of what you're asking. Um, I, I, I'll start with um, you know the the part where you're saying like um, you have a uh, a set of investors, so you'll have an idea and you'll have a pitch already in place that you could take to the investors to you know express their interests in a specific project. You know, um, as it relates to um, what type of investor? I'm not using the, the word investor in your traditional sense. Um, and, and I use that kind of just to explain, um, you know, the ability to, to even have an investor in a public corporation versus a nonprofit where you don't have investors. Um, what you have is, you know, mission uh, driven people. And that will apply in the public benefit side of things that we are talking about here. So it'll be like, okay, there's a foundation with you know a bunch of money, and they need to you know give it to you know certain you know um, causes that they've identified in their you know their strategic plan or their business plan or whatever. So you know you could go to the you know Bill and you know. Melinda Gates, you know, foundation and say, hey, we have this project that, you know, we want to support in Botswana and, you know, we're looking for, you know, a million dollars. And then, you know, you do the pitch and, you know, and you go through the process of applying for the funding that they give out on an annual basis. And, and if you get selected, then you get the money. And then that money could go and be earmarked for the project in Botswana. And I think, you know, the same thing could be done from Botswana, but typically, you know, they want to do it where, you know, they could get recognition here on, you know, on, on, on this side of the, you know, the ocean and also get the tax write-offs and all the other stuff that could go along with it. So um, that's one form of like getting funding. And the idea wasn't just for investors or going out and pitching to investors. It was just a way to garner support for projects that may not get the exposure or get the attention that, uh, a U.S. company would get. You know, a lot of people shy away from foreign invest investment because of a lot of reasons, because the instability and because of lack of resources, lack of training and workforce and on and on and on. I've done international development and those are my same concerns. So I know I would feel more comfortable, you know, next time doing something with a company that has some experience on this side of, um, you know, the earth and then being able to also translate what they've you know, done here over there or have a partnership with someone that is taking those same platforms and ideologies and understandings and collaboration and doing the same thing there. So it'll be uh, kind of like an arm of you know, uh, whatever's going on on the continent of Africa. It's just a... a another uh, vehicle that uh, that won't require 
each individual country in Ghana, I mean, like Ghana or any uh, country in, 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 in Africa will be able to participate. And, you know, these foundations don't have to like um, really worry about the, you know, uh, the mechanics on how it all gets done because they'll give it to a, a organization here who, uh, who would manage it. So it'll be almost like a management, fund management, um, a crowdsourcing type of thing where you could, um, you know, go out to anyone and just do a, you know, a pitch deck on a crowd source type of uh, platform and then just say, hey, we got this project, you can donate. Uh, and, you know, that's how you could, you know, go about it. Along with, you know, investors, you could go to, you know, investors who have these type of, um, you know, funds set aside. Um, it's mm -hmm. corporations. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, obstacles that oh, uh, uh, Open Source had was, uh, the the uh, uh, companies that was already into the business, like for instance, tractors. You had John Deere, Alice Chamber, and the other ones that wasn't happy to have people building tractors themselves, and they kind of uh, let that be known that they they wasn't with, they wasn't with uh, uh, open source building uh, building these tractors that would take business away from them if uh, the uh, idea of open source was successful. So when I was talking about investors, I was kind of going along the lines that uh, uh, it almost had to be people who are trying to that have an understanding that if you're trying to help uh, bring something into existence that, that's needed by, by uh, a particular group that can't buy from the main corporations, can't afford it. You, do you get what I'm saying? You know, you, you take a John Deere tractor that's forty thousand dollars, and then you ask you ask uh, somebody in Botswana, can you can you have can you afford a forty thousand U.S. dollar uh, 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 a tractor based off of the wages that they making in Botswana? So the uh, that was one of the problems that Open Source had when they were pitching the idea of. Uh, um, Building these tractors, uh, letting the communities build the tractors themselves versus buying John Deere. Hmm. I I don't sure I'm not sure if I'm clear. I don't talk that well, but I, I'm I'm trying to uh, uh, get the idea of, of what what was happening versus versus an investor that wants to invest for say the iron ore, the potential resources that's that's on the that's on the property. You say okay. Uh, this 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 land has uh twenty ton, tw twenty million tons of, of iron ore, and uh, you're gonna find all the, the investors that want to invest in in uh, minerals interested, but for for building the machines that Botswana need, find I think finding investors that that ain't just uh how you say trying out there they're not for profit they're just trying to help. I think that might be something. In any case, uh, I will I will follow uh, y'all lead if y'all say, "Hey, this is what we want to try to do." Okay, that that that's fine with me. Yeah, it's just again, just one uh, option or a vehicle. I don't think it's um, it's going to be the, uh, the the everything uh, because there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of uh, obstacles you know to you know to even get in a position to even take anyone's you know donation or funds or money right so this is something that you know we could just kind of have in the background and uh have it work in parallel uh with what's going on on the ground over there and then um you know i think people would be more interested in targeted investment so it will have to be for something like specific things that they could actually wrap their arms around and see a profit and loss statement on that particular business. A lot of people get uncomfortable and I've 
you know, um, developed, you know, these type of platforms where you have the, these whole ecosystems and everything kind of work off each other. Sort of like, you know, the power cube is kind of like the nucleus for all the tools, right? So typically a lot of people, when they see a lot of moving parts, they don't want to invest in that. They're like, no, you seem like you're all over the place or, you know, I don't see, you know, any focus, right? And that's hard because the public benefit organization is, you know, supposed to go out there and find and seek all these different opportunities, right? Um, but the, you know, the thing that I think would probably be critical here starting off is that we should probably look at targeted investment or fundraising or donations for a specific component or piece of what needs to happen in the bigger picture. So it might just be where this group is just gonna invest in building the building, you know, or this group is just gonna invest in building, you know, the machines or, you know, building the greenhouse, right? And they're gonna invest in the production that's gonna come from the greenhouse. Uh, and that may be a way to get the project off the ground. And then once there's enough money that's been made for the local organization, then, they could probably, you know, peel off from the, you know, investor or the investment could be for a, a period of time and be limited. And then you could just go on and now it's funded and it's self-sufficient, right? So I think all you need is just, you know, to get the ball rolling on something that would actually get you in place to open, you know, the door to the next tool or the next piece of equipment. So start with one and then work your way up. So maybe, the business model plan might need to be a little more condensed. Maybe you don't go try to build the whole village or at once, um, just go build, you know, a 3D, you know, printer or something for now and, and get some funding and money going around that and the momentum and then move into the next one and then on and on and on. So that's, you know, kind of my overview of, you know, how this could be rolled out and, um, you know, some ways to, you know, kind of skin the cat. Sure. Uh, Derek, so we I got I three minutes left, Ian. Can I, can I just stop you there? Because we, we mm -hmm. just under two minutes, uh, just under mm -hmm. three minutes, again, running out of time, uh, three minutes remaining, two minutes, 45. Minutes. I talk too much, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 very interesting, very interesting. But uh, I think I got the distinction between investors and because when you said investors, I was thinking of people who are looking to get a return on their investment, on the money they put in. But um, it could be people with a more, uh, more like donations. Mm -hmm. more and, and universities and things like that. And you know, uh, other nonprofits that have a mission that want to partner with someone in Africa you know, like even like Rotary International, I used to be a president of Rotary. There's money there that we could tap into. You see what I mean? Yes. yes. So there's other ways to get money. It's just not just, you know, going out there and asking people, you know, to give you money and hoping for a return. Okay, right. Um, we've only got a minute left. Um, so what I suggest is um, uh, let me in our chats, in our gr uh, groups, um, I'll, I'll write. I'll write uh, uh, just a quick um, uh, record of what we talked about and what we need to do in terms of getting the the public benefit corporation started. Uh, would that sounds would good? That be okay. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. So, um, and Curtis, I, if you have other questions, you know you have my number. So let's you know we could talk offline and keep going. I, I I'm free for the next hours. Okay. Okay, but uh, if I do, I want to do it on Telegram. Yeah, I don't have access to Telegram today. I, unfortunately, um, I I don't have that device that has that. Oh, okay. So we could talk over the phone if you want. Okay. Or we could, or we could communicate, you know, through what Ken is talking about here. Right. Okay. Uh, for me, it's uh, almost midnight. So I'm, I'm off to bed. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Good Appreciate night. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for Bye, everyone. And All right. um, nice to see you. Uh, Jack, you too. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, Jack. Are you there?
stuff is noisy. But anyway, okay, we'll talk on the WhatsApp thing. All right, so good night, guys. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Yeah.